You want details? Bye. I drive a Ferrari, 355 Cabriolet. What's up? I have a ridiculous house in the South Fork. I have every toy you can possibly imagine. And best of all, kids, I am liquid. So, now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. Life advice, life advice rr at gmail.com. All right, let's get right into it. Problem with a girlfriend. Five, eleven and three quarters. Wow, he's really a stickler. 180, 22, bench 245. Future Harvey Specter. Anybody get that? Harvey what? Specter. Mm, Phil Specter is the only Specter I know. It's the guy from Four Suits. I haven't seen Suits, so no. Okay. And we look that up. Hey, guys, usually I can handle my own issues, but needed the big guns for this one because I'm not sure what I should think about it. Me and my girlfriend have known each other for seven years, going back to a youth group I used to go to in early high school. So they met when they were 15. Tried dating her a couple of times. She's not very mature, never dated before, so it didn't work out. So we met again, visiting hometown. We'll leave that out. Uh, middle of my freshman year, I was in college. She dated for six months before she transferred to a different school um, where we did long distance to present day. All right, so let me just get this straight again here. So they met again, visiting their hometown in the middle of his freshman year, dated for six months, um, and then she transferred to another school. So I don't know if they were in the same school together. I, it sounds like he came home, they saw each other, whatever. So um, he goes, basically, we did long distance to now present day doing long distance. She comes from a strict overly close Catholic family. At first, we had a hard time with that since she lives with her parents and she moved back to our hometown. But we finally agreed to keep the relationship between us like mature adults. We grew close and got more intimate along the way, but she always had a hard time with the romancy stuff when we weren't in the same town. Oh, okay. Over the last month, we were going through the longest time from seeing each other, and it was bugging me that she was basically just a friend when... Uh, of a long distance friend. So I brought it up. She flipped out and told me she doesn't like feeling pressure to do things she's not comfortable with and hangs up. I thought like every other tough conversation, we take another breather than talk about it. But instead, she went to her dad when upset with me while I'm watching TV waiting to talk. She texts me I'm in trouble. Attach short message thread. What should I do? Am I in the wrong? Should I be worried? All right? Well, let's see what these texts say. Oh, man, you're living in sin. Well, I mean, this is a. Uh... All right. So this is from her. Cut it out. I'm trying my best. I'm seeing you this weekend. Please cut me some slack. I'm going to bed. I have a big exam. Some support and love coming from my boyfriend would be nice. I'm sorry you're not getting sexy text or calls 24 <laughs> 7. I know exactly how this went. It's not your fault, dude. Mm, well,. There, there needs to be something said at some point, but let's just get through all this. I have things going on, you know. I've made it clear that I miss you, but I told you there's a line I'm comfortable with downstairs talking. Then he says, okay, call me if you need to, love you, and then still up. Then she says, yes, not going well. And then he goes, are you going to want to call and talk tonight? She says, no, you're in trouble to the boyfriend. <laughs> um, then he says, what does that mean? doesn't hear from her okay i'm gonna go to bed i love you hope we could talk tomorrow she says meaning everyone's ticked at what you made me do and have been asking for yeah. uh so then he says is there anything you want me to do i'm confused what's going on i just got off the game and got ready for bed then he asks her again and then she says i had some long conversations thoughts about it i don't feel comfortable dude can we even read this one <laughs> I think so. I mean, why not? Right. I mean, no, nothing. Nobody's business is out there except for this person with a conservative family. I don't know. Yeah, but I just for the audience as you're listening to this, like it goes without saying that there's certain things that you know you shouldn't be. If the other person isn't comfortable, you shouldn't be asking for these things. Uh, it sounds like he wants some pics because it's long distance, right? That's pretty clear, and she's not into that. So guess what? If she's not into it. Don't keep fucking asking. Dad? But, well, then well, dad, right. yeah. but then she told her dad. Right. But then she told her dad. But she says, sorry, you don't get them all the time. Now, I think it's really important to focus in on the phrasing here because she says all the time, which means he's probably got one that he's been clinging to for three months. And he was just like, God, I just want to spice it up a little bit. Can I get a different one? That's what I'm thinking. Right. I don't think it's crazy. I don't think he's like trying to get her to do something she's never done before. 
I think uh, he's just like, you know, I can't, I can't look at this wall again. I got to look at a new wall. You know what I mean? Like I got to. <laughs> We're good. Now. We understand what you're okay. saying. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. No, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? All right. Um, everyone agreed with me and was very upset for me. I have a big day today. I need to be focused. We can talk tomorrow, but I'm not sure what else there is to say. Um, yeah, dude. Like, look, maybe you're totally out of line, right? Maybe you're totally out of line. If she's telling she's not into doing this stuff, then you kind of have to, yeah. That's it. There's not really no. any other part of the conversation. No, no, I'm not talking about breaking up. Like, if you care about oh. the person, if you care about the other person's feelings and you're asking them to do something they don't feel comfortable with, it's pretty fucking simple math. You just stop asking them because you should care more about the person than that kind of stuff. The dad part of it isn't great. Like, I don't know how you're going to go back into that house. Like, let's just say straight up, she was like, you know, my boyfriend, oh, what's wrong, honey? Oh, my boyfriend's just annoyed. I'm not sending him more nudes. Like, <laughs> you're crazy. not, that's not going to happen. Like, I'd break up before I'd ever walk into that fucking house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, you have to break up. Yeah, I just to want to up. be sensitive to the idea that there's going to be part of the audience is going to be like, he's totally out of line, fuck him and all this stuff. And there's a he very is, real yeah. possibility that is what is happening here. But I think to be fair to how we treat all of the stuff, there also could be, you know, like the relationship could still work out. She's annoyed with him. Um, but I don't know how you walk it. I don't know how you look at that dad again, because you guys are so young, too. You know, you got to break. Yeah. I'm taking no one side here. Uh, just put that out there real quick. Um, but yeah, I don't, you know, maybe you have, you know, thicker skin. You could take it and deal with the awkward nature. But the whole family knowing, not even just the dad, like she said, her whole family is mad at you. I, I man, I'm like a married 34 year old dude and I've, would you get divorced? My in laws. I don't know that I would be comfortable <laughs> having that conversation with my in laws. Your marriage would stand up after that. <laughs> Uh, honestly i don't know i don't know what rational male survives this i mean there's obviously the irrational guy that's like fuck it i don't care <laughs> um sorry you yeah. know it's yeah. super horny that night my bad yeah yeah catholic girls are tough i think uh i think you this is just what I, like if you're if they're like for real catholics or just like you know catholic in name only um, no he said it's pretty intense and look yeah. man that's that's they met it like catholic is like, a tough one it's like the hardest one it's kind of the hardest one, except for maybe oh, like tougher Latter Day Saints. So. Yeah, Latter Day Saints. Well, I mean, I'm saying if you're well, let's into not it, see you know what I mean? these. Let's okay, not see not, these because I don't sure? think we know. That could be just... fun. Seems like a thing. All right, uh, but I, it's not. It's not only the fact. I think that a she definitely did this before because she said, "I'm sorry, you don't get them all the time." Kyle so keeps going that, back to that. I to don't avoid, think right, right, which is smart. I don't think this is him, like you know, shooting something into the atmosphere. Like this isn't like new a new like place. nudes this now. Is, yeah. This isn't yeah, this isn't a new thing, I don't think. I think he's just like, you know, God, this would be great if this was my version of a great weekend of just getting an, one of these to hold me over for another three months. Who knows? But the th the bigger issue is that she would throw him under the bus to her dad. This is for other this is just like in, in relationship stuff. Like you should be able to work shit out, you know, with with each other instead of being like every time you're you know, you're pissed or or whatever you just go say something that's totally going to change the way her family looks at you she didn't mm -hmm. give you a choice in that matter that's now like if you choose to i mean there's several reasons i would have broken up with her but i think i think one is like what else is this going to happen like she's going to you know perhaps irreversibly change your you know the way you're looked at by strangers that are always going to be team her first and this is just one thing and this is like a super uncomfortable one like what happens when you get into a like an argument and say some like mean shit to her you know, what, what is she going to call and be like, and then he said this because she just wants somebody to be on her side. Like, this is this is a very bad sign for other things. If you're like you're, you know, and you're yeah, two years into college, you're, get the fuck out. You're you've already you know, this is a loss. This is a loss. Dump the stock and and, <laughs> and, and do something else. This is you know, this this is Wabistics at the end here. You got to go. So I think I think this is especially with age, you should really just there, there's a bunch of red flags and you should just get out. What if he really loves her, though, dude? Yeah. Then she's yeah. okay. this dad is going to hate you maybe forever. Mm. Right. Just to heads and what up. else? It's, and what else is she gonna dog. do this for? Right. Yeah. yeah, it's easy to say, like, hey, I don't, you know, uh, screw this girl, like she told her dad this thing, but like you actually really like her. 
it's not it's not as easy to just walk away. Uh, clearly, there were some issues with this relationship. I think, and you might get dumped, by the way. So, which might be know, the best thing for you. Right. I mean, honestly, <laughs> maybe that's just the easiest way. You're the guy that gets dumped. You can move on. Okay, I think we handled that one all right because I just know that there's an element of that scenario. No, where... we covered all the bases. Yeah, right. Bummer. You don't think Catholics are top three different? Christianity, not like. Oh, I thought you were talking just all religions. Oh yeah. no, I just meant for the for the Christians. Oh, I thought Christian you meant all faith. religions. Are yeah, we on the air that. now, or are we not? Yeah. Why wouldn't we be? We're still on. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Next Calcium email here. Loose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Here we go. My name. What? Most people don't start this way. All right. Is this his name? We don't need it. I'm 5'10", 155, 33 years old, NBA comp, 33-year-old me, Sean Livingston, 23-year-old me, D. Rose. Injuries have taken a toll, but it's all good. I've noticed a pattern here. Like, when people aren't as good as they used to be, they say, like, Boris Diaw all the time. Sean Livingston's another one, too, where it's like, do you know how sick Sean Livingston actually was? By the way, before the injury, he was going to be ridiculous. But Boris Diaw was also incredible when Boris Diaw was good. And he was one of the most unique basketball players in the league. So just because you don't run baseline to baseline, you throw a couple passes yeah, maybe and a little you're a little bigger. out of shape. <laughs> yeah, like it doesn't fucking make you Boris Diaw. So stop with the Boris Diaw comps. We've seen too many of them. Boris Diaw is a special player when he was good. There's a really good chance you don't see the court the way Boris Diaw does. But guys are like, oh, top of the key, a couple entry passes, Boris Diaw. Stop fucking yeah. comparing right. yourself to Boris Diaw. Yeah, I feel like right. uh, I feel like Kyle go. Anderson's another one. <laughs> you too. like Kyle that? Anderson? Anyone who's like not a super great yeah, athlete, yeah, you're like, yeah, right, right, yeah. right. But do you realize you how good Kyle Anderson is? <laughs> you just kind of do every. Well, look, the point of it all is is that all NBA comps, if we wanted to be super strict about it, they'd be dumb mm-hmm. because nobody's as good as the NBA players, or whatever. Um, but there are a couple go tos where it's like, oh, I set a screen, and I pass a little bit, and then it's like you're. You're Kyle Anderson. Boris Diaw was the one that was really starting to bother me. Though. All right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he lives in. God, he gives us every single thing here. What's your Social Security, bro? Yeah, right. I live in the East. I work for a corporate company. Uh, I work in the IT. Now he wants to get vague. Let's say I work in the IT department. <laughs> My group consists of associates. One supervisor, male. Let's call him Mike. Who knows? Could be the names. One manager, female, let's call her Felicia, and then some directors and executive staff above in our division with an annual performance reviews uh, coming up. I submit mine by the deadline of July 21st. However, my supervisor sends an email out a few days later that say they extended the deadline to August 4th. So I asked my review back to add some details and a few things that I thought of after I submitted it. My supervisor's response after sending it back was, I sent it back to you. I erased my comments on your comments so you can change it around. We'll make an observation. There are a lot of I and me in your review. A little humility goes a long way. (laughs) Rough. I think I'd rather have the dad mad at me for nudes. Um, (laughs) Now, this obviously fired me up because what a weird statement to make about a review that is titled annual self-performance review <laughs> Correct. where we were supposed to talk about what we've accomplished and where we've gone above and beyond. I consider myself an team player, understanding the needs of business, always volunteering to help out and assist others. You don't, I, you may be right. And we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You don't often say I help no one. <laughs> I am all about me all the time. Unless it's an NBA trade demand. Uh, how would you guys respond? Also important to note, my supervisor is retiring this year, late 50s, early 60s. Maybe it is about you, dude. You don't know your supervisor's exact age? Mm. Late 50s, early 60s. Just kidding. Uh, he's been mailing it in for at least the last five years. He's extremely negative, always absent in the field, brings very little to the table when it comes to assisting growing the group. Another important note, I copy pasted my review into a Word doc and search I every time I used I, me, and we. I used I 15 times, me zero times, and we 14 times. Love the pot. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's that's annoying. You know what? And it sounds like this feels a little strict with me. But when he says there's a lot of I and me, and then me comes up on the word doc count zero times, like, fuck him. Right? He probably read I a couple times early on. That's why in these reviews, you should we them to death a bit in the beginning. Because if you have three I sentences starting the first paragraph, 
then he that's the first impression just like meeting somebody in person his first impression with you on your review as you said i maybe a couple times at the beginning then he decided to stop evaluating altogether right he'd already made up his mind and if the scattering report is accurate they're giving us that's a mail it in move right he so said that exact sentence right <laughs> right people. so i wouldn't go to anybody else I would we that I would we him a bit more in the beginning. I mean, you said he's retiring, so what are we talking about here? I I think you're totally justified in being pissed about it, and you know it's it's weird that he would already give you that shitty feedback that soon. Now, of course, there's also another version of this where perhaps you're the worst, but you know <laughs> you emailed us, he didn't, so we'll stay with this. I wouldn't get too upset about this. It is this kind of thing is unavoidable in the corporate world. It's going to happen to you again likely multiple times there's going to be somebody that, that is over you that there's just this disconnect and you cannot fathom how they became the way they became and we don't need their origin stories and all that stuff this is unavoidable especially when it's the person who already has one foot out the door Surprised he put that much effort in it i mean he may not like you he may but as you mentioned if he's out of the picture soon and you're happy with where you're at this might be a funny story at happy hour a few years from now and then there's going to be two other guys that say he did the Holy exact shit. same to me <laughs> right yeah. Th that's what i don't understand though is if this guy's so lazy and doesn't give a shit why would he care about giving you feedback early on this thing just give it back to you like mail it in like I, he's he's i don't know he's he's going out of his way to be a dick which the only time people do that is if maybe he's just a huge asshole or he just doesn't Bitter like old guy um I, it just doesn't doesn't add up like he's creating more work for himself by giving you that first initial feedback like what does he care just all this stuff and send it back to you or say no if he doesn't really want to do anything so i, I i'm, I'm kind of confused by that i don't know he could be an old you know an old guy who's just like these fucking kids these fucking kids in my day and he's just like you know giving you a part of i guess i don't know i mean i think i don't give i personally don't give a fuck and this is a little weird because uh, the guy who looks at my personal reviews is actually also in this <laughs> recording but my shit is all about i like that's what my that's what my shit is it's me what's the point that's what i'm i'm eyeing the fuck out of that thing i'm i'm dotting my eyes i i'm like my my it's all it's all this is what i did this is how fast i could do it this is how much i've been doing this is how i feel like i've grown it's who the, who, what, what am, I, am i supposed to do Talking and most of the people me. that are that are doing the, the we, they're full of shit anyway. Like, if yeah. I had to do performance reviews, would I say, we had a great interview with Tracy McGrady. We did no. this amazing open on running backs where we all felt good about the fucking work. Like, that'd be stupid, you know? Right. And yeah. Sarudi would think it was stupid for me doing it that way. What I would say is, we have done these things together, and these are the things I feel really good about. So much of this stuff is so fucking pointless. And, you know, even though I don't feel like like I knew very early on, I didn't want the corporate thing, even though I certainly was a part of it. Being at ESPN for 15 years, it was very, very corporate. Like there was a lot of that stuff. It's like we're just on air, but it can be the same type of job. This stuff is unavoidable. And I think the best advice is to not even get that upset about it because it doesn't sound like there's anything like if this guy were going to be your direct reporter only five years older and you hated him and you loved the place, you love where you live, you, everybody was happy, but you were just concern you were latching yourself to somebody for 10 years i would look at it differently but you're not and you know that kind of feedback he's probably used feedback so many different times he yeah. read the john maxwell thing during a layover didn't finish the book <laughs> saw one thing was like oh i'm gonna start using that because a lot of the corporate types too that have nothing else to offer because clearly there are plenty of people that have a lot to offer the ones that have nothing to offer are just finding a way to fucking survive and they want to look good in that meeting, in that setting. They want to seem like they have a purpose. Yeah. And that's probably what he did to you. Like, I am leaving. I don't do much here. Let me just fucking tell this young kid, you probably did something that he didn't like at some point for him to be this negative where he thinks, like, he's still aware I'm here. I'm going to do something to him to make sure that he's still aware. And there are so many times I can go back over my career at all the different places where there was these things that were said to me where I go, that fucking thing had nothing to do with who I was, what I was or wasn't doing at that time. That was only about the other person across the desk feeling like they were relevant or trying to make it seem like they were relevant. And all, he, all it was was a massive waste of time. Correct. Well, it, it kind of makes me think of you know, like the, we, the, the I, me, we thing is like 
it's like when after like in a post game interview, like, you know, say some quarterback throws like 500 yards and five touchdowns and the you know sideline reporter after the game is like, hey, you know, like, how'd you how'd you get it done? How, you know, you were incredible today. And they're like, well, you know, the weapons and you know, the, the final score is like 45, 44 defense didn't do anything. So, well, you know, defense got us to stop and the quarterback completely doesn't take any of like the the actual like you know, hey, I'm fucking awesome, and I did this, and without me, like, we wouldn't have won the game. And sometimes I get annoyed about that, because I'm like, hey, man, like, you, like, you're Patrick Mahomes, or you're Joe Burrow, like, you're the fucking dude. I know why you have to have a little bit of humility, but if you're literally writing about yourself in, like, a private setting to your boss, you should be talking about yourself. You should be saying, I'm fucking awesome. I'm the man. Here's what I brought to the table. So this guy, not only is he just, like, obviously mailing it in, he's just a shitty, but he doesn't understand how the process even works. So that that pisses me off. I'm, the more I think about this, the more. Well, manager Saruti getting heated. I, yeah, well, <laughs> Kyle, if you, I mean, Kyle, no, like, if you were to put in the thing, like, hey, you know, you know, we did all this, we did that. I'm like, no, Kyle, you did this stuff. Like, take credit for it. Like, you you worked. You know, that's that's that's, that's the point. Right. I'm trying to figure out like how much, you know, how much uh, stuff people bring to the table and what they do, brag about it. So I don't know. I I, I kind of hate it. Right, because because when their manager's talking weaknesses, they're not like we all kind of have to make sure. We yeah, come you in have on time. to figure this. They're out. like, you better show the fuck up <laughs> at nine yeah. o'clock. Like, it's not we got to do better or we don't get our pizza party. It's you you do it or you're not getting it. You know, you're not pizza getting that percent raise. Yeah. Take email. Uh, yeah. I remember somebody telling me like, oh, well, on Mike and Mike, we did this. I'm like, you know who did that? Mike and Mike. Correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Correct. All right. Uh, and good right. luck to the corporate people out there. <laughs> yeah. Godspeed. Thanks to Kyle. Thanks to Steve. Ryan, we're podcast. Ryan, we're